Dear Lord, we thank you today for this Advent season, for all of the things that we have been going through and experiencing throughout this year. The great, the bad, and the ugly. We thank you for all of it. Because your word says all things work together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Lord God, we're so thankful this morning for those who had in their hearts to give, Lord God. We're thankful for those gifts that have been received, Lord God, and we ask you to bless them 100-fold to each of the givers, Lord God. And for those who desired to give but had not, we ask you to bless them as well. So as they come forward uh, again, they'll be able to share monetarily as well as in their spirit. Lord God, we pray for Mount Calvary Baptist Church, our continued growth and development, Lord God, to be who and what you would have us to be and allow us to be good stewards over these resources. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you so much to our youth ushers. And after our song of preparation, we'll come back and talk just a little bit about when folk might get on your last nerve. Amen. <laughs> and so just we'll meditate on that and talk about that as we return. God bless.
praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Some of y'all might need a little release this morning, so I'll just say it as a matter of fact. Everybody just say it as loud as they can. Praise the Lord. 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 All right, that's a little better. Praise God. Thank you in Jesus' name. So many things can have us bound. So many things can have us wound up. So many things can have us anchored down. But Jesus Christ is born. And this is a place where we come to lift those burdens. This is a place where we come to lay them down. This is a place where we come to be invigorated, to be on fire for God. Amen. So we just thank God for Jesus Christ. Today, if you can with me, turn to your Bibles or look to the screen at the Gospel of St. Matthew, St. Matthew chapter 1, Matthew 1, verses 18 through 21, Matthew 1, 18 through 21, and it reads thusly. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And then Joseph heard Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Today's message is put away your plans, put away your plans. Pray with me, please. Lord God, thanking you and loving on you for being God all by yourself. We remind ourselves of that as we speak those words to you because there are so many times that we try to put our control on things. We try to put our order on things. We try to put our way on things. But we need to realize that you are sufficient in and of yourself. You are God all by yourself. So we need to consult you as we move forward as to where you would have us to go and how you would have us to do things. So, Lord God, we come to you right now in this hour, Lord God, asking that you give us a new revelation, a divine understanding, a recollection of what has already been taught and said, so that as we leave this place, we are all the better improved on how we put you first. Lord God, we thank you for this Mount Calvary Baptist Church. We ask you to let your Holy Spirit flow freely in this place and let all the minds and hearts of the hearers today be fertile ground to receive your word as the seed and be planted within them, germinate and grow and bear much fruit for today, for tomorrow, for sharing one with another. In Jesus' name, let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen. You ever wanted to be done with somebody? Oh, so we all don't want to say it out loud. You ever want to be done with somebody? Maybe I was by myself. Yeah, sometimes you want to be done with some folk. Sometimes whether you have a connection with them, whether it be through work or whether it be through some other organization or even, God forbid, the church, you have a connection with them. Other people you're in relationship with. And yet others you've even made a commitment to but you just want to rise up sometimes and just go, I'm done. That's right. That's right. 
I'm through. I'm not doing it no more. I can't handle it no more. I am through. And you want to put away that person. Ask yourself, what, 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 did, what did they do? Did they, did they lie? Did they not meet your expectations? Did they disappoint you? Did they cheat? Did they steal? Or did they just get on your last nerve? And you just want to say, I am done. Well, that's not all that uncommon, even in the scriptures, even in the Bible. And we're looking right here at this Christmas story is this birth of Jesus story and we see that Joseph is on the precipice he's right on the edge of doing that himself it says in verse 18 and 19 now the birth of Jesus was as follows after his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph that means they were in relationship that means they were connected that means they had a commitment that means in today's language they was engaged It says, after that, before they came together. Y'all know what that means. They ain't been together. Not the two of them. She was found to be with child. Let's just stop right there. Now, that's a whole lot of stuff to deal with right there, ain't it? Just think about Joseph for a minute. You're betrothed to this woman. You all are by each other. You're committed to each other. There's an engagement going on. And then she comes and lets you know that she is pregnant. You might want to be done with them, won't you? They lied. They didn't meet your expectations. You were disappointed. And you knew society, they get on your last nerve because they would keep nagging you about what had happened. Now, it does say she was found with a child of the Holy Spirit, but who going to believe that? Y'all have God tell you something or God put you in a position where you heard from God directly. You know what God said, but you also know that don't nobody else know that. And so it puts you in a compromised place. It puts you in a position of anxiety and stress because you're trying to do what God has you to do privately, but you're going it in a public fashion. So now it's all messed up inside of you and you're confused and you don't know where to turn. It says then that Joseph, her husband, being a just man, he was, he was being nice. And not wanting to make her a public example. See, he still had that heart for her. He still had that feeling for her. So he didn't want to just lay it all out before everybody. He didn't want to express it in condemnation. Now, there would be condemnation today with that, wouldn't there? But back then, the condemnation was all the more. We think just a generation or two ago, the level of condemnation would have gone up. Imagine a couple thousand years ago in that society that was not looked upon well at all. And it says he was minded to put her away secretly. See, sometimes when you're done with folk, you just want to put them away. Now, if you're a nice person, maybe you'll do it secretly. But he was done. She showed up pregnant and Joseph was done. But the scripture doesn't end there. In the first part of verse 20, it says, but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. While he thought about it. You ever wanted to be done with somebody all of a sudden because the the emotions are high, the situation just happened, it's fresh on your mind, it's fresh in your heart, and you just have made this decision, and it's final. But then you come to yourself and you think about it for a while and say, well, that's bad, and I didn't like that, and I don't appreciate it, and I don't want it to happen again, but my love and connection for that person is so powerful, I need to... Think about this thing for a minute. You ever had the same things done by one person from another, 
But that other person, you said, well, I just want to hold out hope for. I just want to hold that out. Why did you change your mind about that? Think about the fact that you in your life and me in my life have had people do a similar level of rough stuff to us, have a similar emotion come up in us and say, I want to be done. But with one person, you did let them go. But with another, you didn't. Ask yourself, why is that? My mother, who before my father passed, had been married almost 60 years. And somebody asked him, what's the secret to having such a successful marriage for so long? And she said, honey, ain't no secret. Every single thing that divorced folk done went through, I done went through too with this man. I just decided to stay together with him. <laughs> Anybody got to have more testimony? <laughs> Every single thing this man done done, every single thing this woman done done, the same thing other people, I just decided to stay. Some of us could look at our children, everybody think of a single thing that somebody did that they got rid of a child for, they kept them for. They said, well, I just, I just decided to stay. See, we have a plan, we have a vision, we have a dream, we have an expectation, we have all of these things, but what happens when our view gets compromised? When our view meets a fork in the road, when our view gets totally blown up, what, what, what happens then? That happened to Joseph. See, Joseph had a plan. He was like, I'm going to get married to this fine young thing. And we're going to go on and live together. I'm going to do my little carpentry thing. And she's going to have some children for us. And we're going to live what? Happily ever after. That was the plan. That was the plan. But then the pregnancy showed up. Everything just blew up. And so sometimes you need to put your plans away. See, he wanted to put Mary away. But then he found out he needed to put his plans away. Anybody ever heard of a person by the name of Sarah Jakes, Jake Roberts? Sarah Jakes Roberts. Anybody ever heard of her before? Some of you have, some of you haven't. You might recognize that middle name, Jakes. Happens to be the daughter of the famous T.D. Jakes. This great profound minister of the gospel who is known not only all throughout Texas and all throughout the country, but all throughout the world on many levels. Well, one of his children named Sarah, he had a plan for her. He had a plan that she would get saved, a plan that she would be filled with the Holy Spirit, a plan that she would walk in God's alignment. He had a plan for her, but all that got blown up because... Little Sarah became a teenage mom, and she wasn't married. She was a strip club employee. She was working up in the strip club. She was bartending, but she was all up in there, getting judged like everybody else. She abused alcohol. She abused marijuana, and she was in an abusive marriage. All these things are public information that she shared, so I'm not gossiping about it. I'm just sharing her testimony. She went through all that, but one day she decided to put away her plans. Her plans to show herself differently than her father. Her plans to, to, to be distinguished from him. Her plans to not to have to live up to all those expectations that people had of her. She had plans of her own, but she put them away for God's plan and she came back to church and got baptized in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And within 10 years she is now herself a pastor, married to a prominent pastor. She is a best-selling author and now she even runs what we used to call Woman Thou Art Loosed, her daddy gave that ministry over to her and she done renamed it Woman Evolve. Woman Evolve. And that's what needs to happen with us. We need to put away our plans and evolve into God's plan. Because when our plan comes, our plan may seem nice at first, 
but it's always going to hit that fork in the road, that bump and get blown up. And we need to fall into God's plan. Let's finish that verse 20 where it says, the angel came to Joseph and said to him, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son and she shall call his name, you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his from their sins design and God's plan his vision is always better than ours y'all hear that it's always better I don't care how good you are at planning and y'all look at some I know how to plan stuff some of y'all fancy yourselves good planners you can plan parties you can plan events you can plan your life you can plan your next step you can plan your children you can plan your spouse you can do some planning that's your thing. You can write your list. You can make out all those things and dot all those I's and cross all those T's. But no matter what we do, God's plan always supersedes our plan. Joseph had a happily ever after plan. I'm going to marry this fine woman. I'm going to do a little carpentry. She's going to have a few kids and we're going to live happily ever after. But God's plan was different. You're going to be the honored earthly father of the son of God. Your wife is going to be the mother of the son of God. And the child that you all bring forth is going to save everyone on earth, not just now, but for forever from their sins. Can you imagine how much better a plan that is? And he almost did what? Put her away. How many of us have seen what God is doing for us or somebody's been in our lives and told us something we didn't want to hear and we put them away, but God was using them to take us to a whole nother level and to take us to where his plan would be. It doesn't mean that they're innocent of the things that they did, but it does mean that God can use them as a tool to move you forward and to move me forward. But we spend so much time trying to put folk away instead of putting our plans away that we miss the blessing because God don't do stuff by mistake. See, 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 we can have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. God ain't got all that. God got one plan. And it's his plan. It kind of reminds me of a song. Y'all heard of the whinings? Y'all remember the whinings? They had an older song that I like called Redeem. Let me read the lyrics to that. Just a few of the lyrics for y'all because they say it better than I can say it. It says, it was not a haphazard event, nor a secondary scheme, but it was the plan of the Lord to redeem, to make whole, to bring us full circle, to bring us back to him. The lyrics go on. Calvary didn't just happen to be. It was there before the world began. He decided to die for you and I even before Adam sinned. Amen. Can y'all get that? Amen. Even before Adam sinned, God's plan A was to redeem us and save us and to bring us home. Ain't God good? Can y'all? Imagine if somebody's so good at planning that before you messed up what you didn't even know you were going to mess up, they done already made a way for you to get back. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that makes me say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You with those lyrics. It says, he was born of a to redeem. Jesus took all of his glory in heaven to redeem. Then he died on the cross to what? Redeem. Then he rose from the grave to do what? Redeem. What a plan of the Lord to what? Redeem. Even before the original sin, redemption was the plan of God. See, some of us are sitting right now 
and we have a thought in our minds that our plans have blown up, that our strategies, our designs for our lives are all messed up. Here, Pastor, I thought I was going to be this by this age. I thought I was going to do that by the other age. I thought I was going to be in this situation by this time. I thought by this time next year, everything would be, I, I thought, I thought, I thought. But now you look in the mirror and you look at yourself and go, mm, it's all messed up. I got to catch up. I got to work so much harder at my plan because I'm so far behind. Well, guess what? You can't fix it. You can't make it up. But guess what? God can redeem the time. God can position you from where you are and take you not where you wanted to go, but beyond where you expected to go in no time at all. God can take a moment to do something that you thought took forever he is there for us each and every day like Joseph he decided to order his steps in the word and we need to understand that today we need to understand today that when we're here with God we might find ourselves in any of a varied situations but no matter where we find ourselves we just need to order ourselves in the word. If we order ourselves in the word, then everything is going to come out all right. If we order ourselves in the world, we'll remember what Proverbs is telling us. Man makes his plans, but God does what? Orders our steps. Orders our steps. How many of you all want your steps ordered by God? I know I do. I don't know about you, but me standing here, Reverend Pastor, standing here, can tell you I done made many plans and I'm blown up in my face. <laughs> can y'all say amen to that? Amen. But when I follow his plan, even if something seems to be a fork in the road, even if it seems to be a pitfall, even if it seems to be trouble, if I'm in his word, everything is going to be his plan and everything is going to be all right. We don't need to put away folk. We don't need to put away institutions. We don't need to put away family. We need to put away our plans and let God can take control. Amen? Amen. If you can stand on your feet, stand on your feet and give him a hallelujah today and let him know that everything is all right. As we're here this morning, and each and every one of us in here, whether loosely or haphazardly, or whether with a fine-tuned instrument, we have made some plans. Well, right now, we want to commit to take those plans and lay them at the feet of God and allow God to give them to the Holy Spirit and to Jesus and to redeem those plans so they will become his. If you're here this morning and you know of God and you know the plan of God, but you've never been on board with that plan, you've never made a verbal commitment to follow that plan and say that Jesus is Lord of your life, then this is that opportunity for you to come forward and just say that prayer and it starts right there. Nothing extra fancy, you didn't may not have planned it today, <laughs> amen? But you could just slip out from the pew and just make your way up front for prayer. And we can pray that God receive you this morning. As we continue in prayer and that call, If you're here today and you don't have a church home, you know him as Lord and Savior, you've been baptized or wish to be baptized and wish to make Mount Calvary your home, your home base for God's plan for you. The doors of the church are open. Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Let's just sing that song for a minute.
the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We're so thankful that we have one to be able to come forward, to be able to join us here at Mount Calvary. And you get home. Come on back. And so we'll come and introduce her to the congregation in just a moment. But as we wait and get information from her, if you're here today and you have a plan that you've been following, or the plans that you have have blown up in your face, and you wish to lay them before God, lay them at God's feet, and turn your life over to Him and allow God to give you the plan for your life. If that's you, the altar is open for prayer. Won't you come? Won't you come? The altar is open at this time. Won't you make your way forward? Won't you come? Won't you come? All who need prayer. that song softly. Reverend Witherspoon will have us led in a prayer for our lives and for our thoughts and for our plans and I will walk through each of you and anoint you with oil and pray for you individually a word in the spirit as you move forward in your plans for God. Amen. Oh, Lord God, we come before your throne of grace and mercy. Asking you, Father God, to order our steps this day in your word. Strip us of our will and place your will in our lives. That we may be obedient to your word and your way. Father God, we even ask you to touch our bodies. They may be a little weak and a little weary, but we know that you are our Father. We know, Father God, you are a healer. We know, Father God, that you are everything that we ever need. So we ask you in the name of Jesus to provide and supply each and every one of our needs. Strengthen us where we are weak and build us up where we are torn down. But you are a bridge over troubled water. You are our shelter in a time of need. Close us with your righteousness and strengthen us with your love. Father God, we give you the glory and honor and praise. We love you and we adore you, Father God. But Father God, we want you to just order our steps. Strip us of our will that we may walk according to your purpose. Let us see what you want us to do, Father God, to walk according to your will that we may do the things that you have called us to do. So, Father God, not allow us to give up on self, but give us that hope to continue to fellowship with you. We love you, God, and we praise you. We magnify you. We adore you because you are our Father. So, Father God, continuously to keep us in your loving arms, continuously to show us your love, continuously to keep grace and mercy upon us. We just say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we praise, we pray, and we pray. And we will always give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Please, God.